I think in Vancouver's history, um, and I grew up in the Lower Mainland, we assume that Stanley Park was a place that people protected throughout all of its history, that in 1888 when it opened to the public, we stopped all modification to this little peninsula next to the downtown core. But in fact, the greatest effect that humans had on this place uh, over it, the entirety of its history occurred after it became a park. The most trees were removed after it became a park, the most concrete was laid after it became a park, the most building was done in the park after it became a park. I just published a book called Inventing Stanley Park, an Environmental History. But one of the arguments of the book is that a park is an idea that we impose on land and that idea changes over time. And in the process of that idea changing, the ecology of the park changes. The appropriate role for the park managers in the first half of the 20th century and the end of the 19th century was to improve nature. So to change the forest, add infrastructure for recreational purposes, um, introduce animals for entertainment purposes. But after 1965, a different kind of management approach was applied to the park, which I characterize as preservationist, that humans should try in all instances to modify the park as little as possible and to keep it in a natural state. And the consequence of this, of course, is that it severely constrained the park board's ability to do anything with the park. You couldn't cut a tree down without a major public debate. And I think that the preservationist impulse after 1965 occurred because of a kind of cultural shift in thinking about the park. That the promotion of the park through tourist literature and the efforts of the park board and the Vancouver Tourist Association portrayed Stanley Park as a historical relic that it was a snippet of what Vancouver looked like before it became a city. And so as people began to think of the park as a part of the city's past, the preservationist impulse became stronger, such that by 1988, the park was designated a national historic site, which I always thought was very odd, because I thought, how can you make a park a national historic site? Because there are natural elements of Stanley Park, including its forest, that have very high level historical preservation status. Well, what if a tree dies? What if a windstorm knocks over a bunch of trees? It's not really a historic park, and those trees really aren't historic. Very few of the trees in Stanley Park are old growth. Um, most of them were planted in the 20th century, but they look old. In part, I think, because we don't see the natural environment having its own history, absent of what we do to it. And so uh, the book explores how these ideas developed within the case study of Vancouver and how Stanley Park came to mean so much for this city uh, over the course of, of a couple hundred years.